This is Mike Mayhem along with Guttural Glenn, and we're here to whip it! The following podcast contains spoilers for Whip It! You have been warned! What's going on, everybody? It's Gutter Oakland, along with Mike Mayhem. <laughs> Listen here, <your> brother. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I could feel the estrogen in my body. I don't even know what that <laughs> means. <laughs> uh, yes, the estrogen, the uh, the thing you take to get roided out and everything. <laughs> yes. How you doing? Oh my god, now that I had recovered my throat, I think it's gone again, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that'll happen. Any, anything for the meme, you know? Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes. I'm not too bad besides that, Mike. How have you been? Oh, I have been all right, and oh. uh, yeah, things have been okay. <laughs> That sounds a lot like life. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Uh, but I, I, I didn't go too hard with movies this week because uh, mm-hmm. I've been trying to get all of our podcast videos up onto the YouTubes. You've been the man with the so plan. that's been taking a lot of time. But you know, here we are. Mm-hmm. I still watch more than most people. Including Uh, myself at all times. Yes. uh, I know you watched a few movies because we watched a few movies together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would you like to discuss them with the class? (laughs) Hell yeah. First off, I'd like to say that the first one that I watched was not a movie at all. In fact, it was a TV show because that's just who I am as a person. You Not doing what we're supposed to do. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So I had watched the first episode of The Last of Us. Uh, I I think I mentioned the last episode that... uh, it was coming out and that you know it's been getting some good reviews and stuff like that uh fun little fact it is really fucking good and it's basically copy and paste from the video game yeah uh, which is pretty sick um and i also last night i just watched the second one and i feel so absolutely bad for bella ramsey who plays ellie in this because she's She's been getting shit on by a lot of social media because people are assholes. The internet fucking sucks, man. Uh, because she is fantastic. She's she's Ellie. She, there's no her acting capability and just smart assness of the character. She's Ellie. She's the mm-hmm. character. She doesn't exactly look like Ellie, but people have been going hard and absolutely yeah. horrendously dick holes. That is my just... problem with the masses and fan casting and everything, because mm-hmm. they only think about looks. Yeah. When personality they're... is undoubtedly more important when it comes to acting than... Because, than, like, someone might read... I mean, I don't know anything about Last of Us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said she's kind of like a, a, a smartass. Someone could read... She's a teenager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone could read that as being, like, you know, youthful and, and full of joy and just kind of, like, funny. But mm-hmm. there's a difference between that and being a smart ass. So you got to go with the right personality to play a role. Looks don't looks come second to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's she's there was there was moments where I was like, oh, well, she I mean, she she was great in Game of Thrones. She could be good in this. But like the first two episodes, she's fantastic. And yeah. I think people need to fucking chill the hell out. And yeah. just it, just enjoy what what she's doing because yeah. Pedro Pascal doesn't look exactly like Joel, but people don't give the him that much shit over it. It's mm-hmm. crazy. But anyway, it's a great show so far. It's only two episodes deep. Still a lot to go. I'm excited because it's it's pretty much scene for scene from the game so far. So I'm, I'm pretty yeah. hype. Once it gets going, I'm sure I'll tell you to watch it a few times, and then I think you should. But anyway, away from that. Then we watched Broker. There is a review up for that. We've got a nice little special guest, uh, little little Benny, little Benny mm-hmm. Bean, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I won't say much more about the movie, but <laughs> dear God, that man who's the the main actor, <laughs> national treasure, son of a bitch, that guy's treasure, beautiful. Song Kang Ho is an international treasure. There's mm-hmm. nothing you can do about it. Um, and then I had started All Quiet on the Western Front before we watched a double feature at the Bryn Mawr. 
uh, film institute. I did not get to finish that yet. I was going to finish it last night, but then I watched the last of his episode too. Glenn. Because I'm a piece of shit. I know. You I know, are. I know. <sighs> Go ahead. Go ahead. The longer it takes you to watch these movies, the longer people have to wait for the studies. <laughs> that's that's their problem. Not my <laughs> it's my problem because I want to <laughs> get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we did do the double feature. We watched yeah. After Sun, which I thought was in a just an amazing movie. Uh, there is a review for that. Uh, Slow Burn. Uh, I know I didn't want to talk about the other movie, but I will talk about this one. How dare you? And then um, we watched Women Talking. There is going to be no review for that, so we can actually talk about this one. Yes. Uh, great film. The title is very self-explanatory of what's going to happen in the movie because... Mm-hmm. So a lot women of women will talking, be talking yeah. a lot of different points of views on the matter they are talking about. It's just a super solid film. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then, of course, I watched Whip It. Mike. Yes. What did you get into? Well, I watched, uh, I finished, so last week I was talking about how I started the Swedish uh, miniseries by uh, Ingmar Bergman called Scenes from a Marriage. Uh, mm-hmm. I finished it. The first half is much better than the last half. Um, it, it kind of becomes, I don't know. It doesn't feel like something because it was made in the seventies. You know that the people had to wait at least a week to see the next episode. It wasn't like today where you can just binge it all. Yeah. Um, it, like I'm it, doing right now with the last of us. Exactly. In my mind, it doesn't work as well when you're watching it all like one episode after the other. Yeah. There's because, no anticipation or anything. Yeah. Their, their relationship changes in between episodes and it just kind of starts the next episode with their current like years weeks months have passed uh not necessarily in that order could be weeks months years or have have passed Mm -hmm. uh, and their relationship's completely different and you're just kind of like oh okay they like each other now oh they hate each other now oh they like each other now so it, it it's i feel like it definitely needs time in between episodes in order to you know let it marinate and let uh little nuances uh, kind of hook on so you can kind of adjust with them. Otherwise, mm-hmm. it's very jarring. Still very well done, well acted, well written and everything, but it is very jarring when you're uh, watching it all five hours at one time. Uh, oh, my but yeah, God. Yeah, that scene's from a marriage. Uh, then I watched a uh, movie from 1996 with Michael Keaton and Michael Keaton and Michael Keaton and Michael Keaton called Multiplicity. <laughs> uh, I... Did not care for this movie. I, my review for it is I will now only see Michael Keaton in films before Birdman as being from his character in Birdman <laughs> that set him spiraling into depression. And uh, that's how I feel about this. You know, it's uh, the actor who played Birdman off of the the hype of Birdman. Now he's playing him different variations of himself four times. And it's much more enjoyable when you think about it that way, not the real life thing that happened to Michael Keaton, which is exactly what happened in Birdman. Um, minus the depression, because he seems pretty, uh, well, like a seems pretty, pretty in it. Yeah, uh, I remember it, liking that movie when I saw it. I don't remember when that was it's, though. It's okay. It's just super nineties. Yeah. Uh, so it di- it didn't really age well. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's fine. Is, is it's, that the movie where he gets pissed off because he sleeps with his own wife, but it's not him? Well, the, yeah, the clones try not to sleep with her, but she's very persistent. Yeah. Uh, so essentially she rapes three clones, mm. um, but not really. It uh, happens, it, you know. You know, she doesn't take no for an answer the first time, which is kind of rape if we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't end in rape. It's just 90s men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can't say uh, no. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's... It has some funny moments, but overall it fell flat in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the flamboyant, or not flamboyant, he's a feminine one, the one who's like a Mr. Mom type. Yeah. Uh, he I, he was my favorite just because he was yeah. sassy, and I liked it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's an okay movie. It just didn't age well, and I'm not in, I, I don't love it. That's essentially what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, then I watched Steven Spielberg's film from t- uh, 2011 called War Horse. That is the most 90s movie from 2011 I have ever seen. (laughs) Uh, It felt like a 90s movie from pacing to writing to acting to even lighting. It was lit like a 90s movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, It it was like a 
there are war sequences, but it was like PG-13, so they're very fake kind of war sequences, especially compared to All Quiet on the Western Front and other modern films, 1917, another one. Okay. Uh, but yeah. But uh, then I watched a, a YouTube video called Why Everyone Needs a Wayman, which is a, essentially about why Wayman is the greatest cinematic character of all time. Wayman from Everything, <laughs> Everywhere, All at Once, which made me, of course, want to watch Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. So I did that because I you have, have a, a, Do you have a tally on how many times you've watched it now? Uh, that was my ninth time. Not bad. Uh, or eighth. Hold on. Stand by. Almost in the double digits. Yeah, that was my ninth time. Uh, apparently, <laughs> it, well, it will probably be nominated for Best Picture, and then well, they'll probably uh, be released uh, again into theaters. So I'll probably see it again in theaters once I can. Perfect. Um, but yes, you know, it's cr- it's crazy. I still cry in it. I've cried all nine times that I've watched it. It's it's uncanny. This I has never happened the, to me before. The tears keep flowing. I love they it. They keep flowing. I don't know what's what's wrong with me. Uh, but <laughs> then I watched Broker. Uh, as you said, we have a review for that, so we can uh, you can check that out to hear our thoughts. Uh, Song Kang Ho is an international treasure, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I watched Whip It. We're going to get into that in just a minute. Then we watched Together After Sun, which there will be a review uh, probably by the time this is up, but I don't want to make any promises uh, just in case things come up with me. But there will be a review for After Sun eventually. Mm-hmm. on our YouTube channel, and then we watched Women Talking, which I really liked. It's it's a fantastic mo- movie. It is all just them talking, but everything, their their performances are compelling. What they're saying is compelling. It's a very hey, well... You even missed a really good one, too. I know! <sighs> Guy in his bathroom breaks, guys. Uh, well, I've, I've, I've told myself that, like, if... If... You know, I used to be really... I'm still pretty good at holding in my urine, but it, it used to... <laughs> too much information, I know. But, like, it would always, like, get to the point where it would hurt. And then yeah. I would just stop paying attention to the movie because I was in in not in a comfortable Absolute state. agony, yeah. So I was just like, why am I doing this to myself? If I... I Especially if the the bathroom's close by, I'll be gone thirty seconds top. So like, mm-hmm. what am I doing? Of course, I missed the most powerful thirty seconds. <laughs> I, I'm usually pretty good at picking out when it's gonna dull down or die down a bit. Uh, I was wrong this time. Apparently, you were close. It was about thirty <laughs> seconds after the thirty <laughs> seconds you thought. Yes. So uh, yeah, women talk is really good. I highly suggest people check that out. Unfortunately, it hasn't been getting much of a release because uh, their distribu- distribution company uh, sucks, probably. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's all I watched. Before we get into Whip It, I just want to mention the 95th Academy Award nominations are being announced uh, tomorrow for us, which is the 24th. Huzzah! Uh, about a week ago for the time this podcast comes out. So the Academy Awards. I know the Academy Awards don't really matter. Awards for movies in general don't really matter. I still have fun with them. I think it is a good starting point for what movies you should watch. Uh, but oftentimes there are way more deserving movies than the ones that get nominated, so we'll see. Uh, but yes, without any further ado, let's get into Whip It. If I could have dinner with anyone, it would have to be God. My mom is going to kill me. It says temporary. Also from Bodine, Miss Bliss Calendar. I'm sorry that these pageants don't live up to your high moral standards, but there's a lot you can learn from them no matter what you go on to be in life. Out of all the places to go to in the world, who would come to Bodine? So, what are you like? Alternative now? Alternative to what? What is this? Roller derby? Ooh. Welcome to skate night at the warehouse. The boys want to be The girls want to be Clean up on aisle five. I just want to tell you all that you're my new heroes. Well, put some skates on. Be your own hero. The last time I wore skates, they had Barbies on them. I want to be her. I guess if you need You could be our mascot. <laughs> In Bodine, Texas, an indie rock-loving misfit finds a way of dealing with a small-town misery after discovering a roller, I almost said coaster, derby league in nearby Austin. You were so close. Ooh. So close. Uh, close enough. I ruined close. it for myself. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Uh, it's directed by Drew Barrymore, written by Shauna Cross, based on the book by Shauna Cross, uh, starring Elliot Page, Drew Barrymore, Kristen Wiig, Sarah Habel, uh, Jimmy Fallon's in there. 
Marsha Gay Harden, Alia Shawcat, uh, Daniel Stern. And that's pretty much it. There's a few others. Eve is mm-hmm. in there. I don't know who Eve is. She looks familiar, but I don't recognize uh, her name. She's an R and B artist. That is probably why I recognize her, but have no idea who the hell she is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's yeah, great. This, of course, oh, I don't like R&B that much, so I'll, I'll take your word for it. Uh, this, of course, came up on Streaming Roulette, uh, and I wanted to watch it because I was a projectionist uh, when this came out, <coughs> and there was one week where this uh, film, the film print of this, had a brain wrap five times in one week, which is like unheard of, uh, and uh, for those of you who don't know, a brain wrap is when the film gets stuck and because it's not going through the projector, the bulb melts the film. You know, everyone has seen that effect where of like melting film. That is a brain wrap. That's what happens when there's a brain wrap. Uh, and that happened five times. And each time was so badly tangled that we could not restart the show. So we had to give out passes. And it was actually a pretty successful sh- movie. So it was a hell of a week. Uh, Very nice. But yes, um, I just watching learned Eve this, is also from Philly. Who? Eve's from Eve. Philly? Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to pretend I listen to her stuff then so I can act <laughs> like I'm supporting her. Uh, it's nothing against her. I just don't like that kind of music personally. Um, but yeah, I was hoping more from this movie. I did not care for this movie at all. I saw that you really? had a pretty high score. And I'm wondering if it held up for you. Uh, funny enough, it, it did. Um Ooh. Uh, I think I, I probably liked it more back then, but it, it definitely held up in the regard that I'm, you know, uh, 21, or not 21, 11 years older than when I first watched it, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, it holds up. It's a coming of age story, uh, you know, uh, of a girl finding roller derby, like the synopsis said, and just finding her own hobbies that she likes and, just kicking ass doing it pretty much. Um, yeah. And it, it pretty much does that. It's very, it's pretty lighthearted, very, pretty funny. Um, Drew Barrymore is not as in, in it as much as I thought she was going to be. Or yeah. at least I mean, she's I re- directing it, so she was probably trying to limit her yeah. part. And also, don't remember Kristen Wiig being this, in this at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was before she was really that famous. Yeah. Um, like, I think she was just starting SNL around this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and I don't know why, but I thought... Like when I first watched this, Jimmy Fallon was fucking hilarious in this. He, he was, he, he had his moments, but it was, it was, it wasn't as hilarious as I remembered it being. I don't even think he had his moments. I didn't laugh <laughs> a single time he spoke. Yeah. Uh, my biggest problem with this movie, I love the story. I mm-hmm. love the concept. I love the idea of, you know, this, this, uh, teenage girl who, uh, is being brought up in beauty pageants, finding herself by playing roller derby, which is a very niche thing. Like, there's not many roller derby leagues in the country. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of is a cool concept. But w- my biggest problem with this, and unfortunately, this is Drew Barrymore's fault, is that every single scene, I could feel how they were setting it up. Yeah, I could feel uh, like. Uh, one scene in particular is like they're at this party and the uh, douchey indie rock guy walks in mm-hmm. and, Oliver. and um, Oliver walks in and Bliss is there, uh, Elliot Page's character, um, and uh, he just sits down and I could just feel Drew Barrymore be like, okay, you're going to walk in and then you're going to ask her what she's, what she's into or whatever. I forget exactly <laughs> what it is, but it's... Um, Walk it in just, and say it was she has nice taste or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just very, very. It felt very student filmy, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe this is it's, Drew Barrymore's. This, this first. is her first feature length film. She yeah, did so a, I, I don't, I can't really blame her for that. You know, everyone has to do stuff like that. Um, and but she it, hasn't it really just, done anything since either. Just a music video. Yeah. I mean, she has a talk show now, so yeah, I'm sure she's busy with that. Uh, but yeah, I, again, I don't have a problem with it feeling that way. But like, I just felt every setup. I felt every in between every take, them going, "Okay, you're going to stand here. You're going to stand here." Then, then uh, this person's going to walk in, say their line, and then walk out. Uh, mm-hmm. I just, it, I felt that while I was watching it, and it, it, it didn't 
flow well or as well as I would have liked at least. Um, but you know, it, there was enough there to make me not hate watching it, but yeah. I just, it, it just, it felt very amateurish and I feel bad saying that, but it, it really did in my opinion. You know, it's a, a, a weird uh, statement that I'm about to say, and it's kind of a mystery with me. You never know what the hell I'm going to say, but this is a good companion piece with Napoleon Dynamite. Hmm. You gotta I sit kind there. of. You gotta I see. I kind of get that. But they're in a they're in a small town. They have a they have this this quirky, weird, nerdy chick. Well, who's into pageants. And then you got Napoleon Dynamite, who's not into that stuff at all. But then you got the 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 friend who reminded me of Pedro, but his name was it was like uh, what the oh fuck what was his name uh, Birdman? He reminded me of of Pedro a, a little lot. bit. Yeah, I could get that. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was like a, a pretty fun companion piece if you uh, wanted to sit down and do a double feature. Tonally, I think they're completely different. But mm. uh, if, if you go that way, sure, I, I, I could see that. I don't know if I agree with it. I dare but, you with you not completely agreeing with me at all times. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to <laughs> say that you're wrong. I'm just going to say I think you're wrong. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you think it's a good companion piece, I'm sure there's other people as well. Uh, but I, I also come say this co- actually kind of liking Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, I like, like Napoleon Dynamite too. Yeah, this, but this, you don't like this, sadly. I don't like this. That's that's the thing. Um, it just felt everything felt so forced. Uh, Jimmy Fallon should never play anyone but himself. I know you <laughs> hate it when talk show hosts play themselves mm-hmm. in in movies. But he is not a strong enough actor to play anyone other than Jimmy Fallon. And I'm, I'm you, sorry to say it. Have you watched Fever Pitch? Uh, I haven't. I, I, admittedly, I haven't. I haven't um, watched it in a while, so my opinion might change on that. But I thought he was decent in that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know me with, uh, with, with uh, mm, romantics. Rom- romantic comedies. Uh, the only movie I've seen where he didn't play Jimmy Fallon... Uh, of his, I know there's one. Oh shit, he's in Band of Brothers. What? Um, taxi. Is he? Oh, yeah, he taxi. Is. Taxi. Uh, but I don't remember enough of that. Uh, so who knows? Uh, I don't hate Jimmy Fallon. I just don't think he's a good actor. You know, I think <laughs> I think he's a very personal person that's good in talk shows, even if his laugh does seem kind of fake sometimes. Uh, you know, you need that with talk shows, though. You you got you got to be willing to laugh at something that's not funny for the sake of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I I didn't like that. Uh, probably the only time I didn't like Alia Shawcat in something. Uh, I love Alia Shawcat. I thought she was very it's just bad writing. Everything the the bad writing of this just made everyone worse. Uh, Daniel Stern was worse. Um, it, it felt like parts of his character from Home Alone were trying to break through at times, uh, but he was also just a dad. Mm-hmm. So it, it, I don't know. The whole thing just was weird to me. Uh, Kristen Wiig feels like she's acting in this. Uh, again, she was pretty new at the time, so I don't know. I just think it. it none of it feels natural. Okay. And that yeah. yeah I'm- I'm going to say something that might get me fired. You're fired. I've, oh, yeah. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> no, there's there's the Juliet Lewis. I, it's nothing against her. It's just like one of those people, like I just happen to not like their face, so I don't necessarily like them. I feel bad for saying that. But she's, she's, she's decent in this. She's much better in other things. And... But she's got that that Matt Damon face for me, where I'm like, I I don't like you that much, and I can't stand you. <laughs> I <laughs> or at least she was... younger Matt Damon for sure. I would, I never liked yeah. younger Matt Damon. But I she, she was like horrible in this. Oh uh, no, she's she's not great. She's definitely better in many other things. Yeah, but yeah, it, I mean, just... this this whole movie just felt like a you know it, a B movie, which yeah, it, it, it felt is. like a bunch of tough or not tough people trying to act tough. Uh, like I didn't believe that any of them were really like these liberated tough women, yeah. Who, who could the, you know the hits fight never felt they like they to. hit either. Yeah, it, it it never really did. Um, but you know, it, it at the very least, it looked like they had fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I think Andrew Wilson's character was pretty funny, Razor. Yeah. Um, uh, Owen Wilson's brother, funnily enough, and, and Luke Wilson's brother. Uh, Is it? The, the Forgotten Wilson, yeah. He's the Forgotten oh, wow. Wilson. I wondered um, why he sounded so much like both of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, the the thing, I don't know. I just, I did not vibe with this movie at all uh, to the point where I'm using the word vibe like that. Yeah, um, you did just say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh it just filled with overacting acting uh cringy writing um and and like there were pauses within the dialogue that made me think that they thought there was going to be a big laugh and then it just wasn't funny at all in my opinion yeah um so it kind of felt sitcommy in a way too at times mm-hmm. uh but the uh, and and on top of that, the indie band and I, I feel bad. So I, I don't feel bad saying this. <laughs> I'm sure there's people that that do like his music, but the guy who plays Oliver, his band fucking sucked in this. They were yeah. horrible. They and, I, and I didn't like, really listen to the song, so I wouldn't necessarily was, remember. It was real bad, and uh, uh, Bliss is just supposed to be uh infatuated with him from the get-go like i i don't believe that she um, is 17 <laughs> that's true but yeah. i don't know i feel like it took more for me to be infatuated with someone you're also built very different mike from other that's people true. <laughs> that's very true i am built different uh um, not in a physical well kind of a physical yeah, way but I mean, mostly a mental way <laughs> yeah but uh i mean I, I feel like it's definitely a b movie it definitely had to be fun on set because Drew Barrymore is Drew Barrymore. You can't not love her. Mm-hmm. Everybody seemed like they had fun. The acting wasn't great. Um, Elliot Page um, was good, but like mm-hmm. watching this, and I, I know you know we're talking about Whippet, but watching this made me realize so like much like how much The Last of Us took from Elliot Page and like their performances in the past. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because, holy shit, they're the same person. <laughs> Looks-wise, <laughs> like, uh, too. Yeah, well, they, they took her look without her permission. Well, yeah. their permission at the time. Yeah. Um, and she was very pissed about that. Yeah. If it seems like we're avoiding talking about Elliot Page, it's because there's some confusion I'm, about... What, I'm a piece of shit. I what just, pronouns to use. And I'm, we don't want to offend anyone, so... I just want to disclaim that once I know somebody's name for, like, a portion of time, it's very hard for me to unwire it like yeah. that. I'm an ass. I, I'm trying. You hear me trying, at least. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you but, can feel us <laughs> trying by just uh, uh, not bringing... Elliot Page up that yeah. much, or uh, I've I've been purposefully using the character name Bliss mm-hmm. because the character is a she. Uh, yeah, even if Elliot was still Elliot back then, mm-hmm. not legally, of course, but yeah, there we but, go. Um, We're getting canceled after this. It's that's, okay. That's fine. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, but we we really do not mean to insult or uh, offend anyone. If that's if that's the case, we do apologize. Of course. Um, but I mean, a- Elliot was good. Um, you could see their performance, you know, inspires many different things, whether it's from this or from Juno, or for The Last of Us specifically, um, and Ellie character, even the even the name Ellie. <laughs> yeah. Oh but, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, um, I mean, it, it holds up to what the standards of what I thought this movie was going to be, like what I remembered, and it it did. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't think there's too much else really to say. I think that this would be a good candidate for a remake. Uh, I feel like it could be made much better. I know there's people out there that like this movie. Obviously, I am in the minority uh, Mm -hmm. because it does have a 6.9. Nice. uh, Out of 10 (laughs) (laughs) on IMDb. Um, And uh, Metacritic score of uh, 68. So I'm definitely, you know, in the minority here. I I didn't like it. Um, I will also say... What? That I will also say that this uh, caused a surge in the you know the roller derby community of how mm-hmm. many people like started getting interested in everything because mm-hmm. there was hey there, I've dated two girls who were into roller derby and I've watched one I do not remember it at all I was very confused at was as what was happening but well they explained to you what's happening in this movie very I'll be well honest. and very I'll often be, I'll be honest I don't know what the fuck was going on still but. Uh, I was there. I enjoyed, but uh, the, sorry. Continue. 
No, they're they're they're, they're great uh, chicks who do it. They're tough as hell, yeah. and like like this movie, you know, uh, states they're all just people with ordinary lives or just like kids or just living like waitresses and stuff yeah. like that. They're all just normal people, and they were all just genuine. Yeah, genuine it's just another sport. Like, yeah, that's all it is. Really, is just another sport. Um, mm-hmm. And I would love to go to a roller derby at some time, just because it, it it's bonkers. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I like I like brutal sports, uh, mainly hockey. Uh, mm-hmm. Hockey's better than football. Everyone else uh, that disagrees can shut the fuck up about that because <laughs> you don't know hockey if you disagree. Yeah, they even uh, said that uh, in this that there was uh, some some uh, hockey players that I guess didn't make it, so they did roller derby. Yeah, uh, there is uh, the funniest thing Jimmy Fallon said in this. Uh, it's like the third or fourth time. Uh, that there is a, a derby going on, and he's explaining the rules again. Mm-hmm. And he says something along the lines of, I know what you're saying. Didn't you already say this? It's like, yes, but you still don't understand the rules. <laughs> there's, there's something like that where he's just like pointing out the fact that he's repeated the rules over and over again because people can never remember the rules. Uh, but or last thing I have to, to say, the rules. <laughs> yeah, last thing I have to say is that this has the funniest climax ever with that slow motion, very short jump over two fallen, <laughs> two fallen uh, roller derby, it's roller yeah. der- derbyites, whatever you want to call them. And I, uh, I laughed out loud when I saw that because it was just like, I don't think it was meant to be funny, but because but it, it just was ended up being fun. The way it was shot, it, uh, it was like a wide shot, so it was even less impressive than if they did a close up of mm-hmm. uh, Elliot Page jumping. Um, so it was just like th- that's it. That's your your climax right there. <laughs> yep. Okay, uh, but yeah, it's uh, not for me. I, I I can understand why. There's enough there where I understand why people like it, but it is not for me. And that's quite all right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to the judgment. As always, it needs to be unanimous decision whether or not it goes to the KFR shelf with the likes of Apostle and Handmaiden. Glenn, because you probably know what my answer is, what's your answer? Uh. Honestly, I I would put it on the shelf. Mm. Like it's it's just a genuinely uh, decent fun time. Uh, it, a lot of people remember this movie, and I was one of them. And I I still enjoyed it over the last what is it four? Oh my god, fourteen years now. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and also I do want to mention something. Can we please bring back like gag reels in the credits? Because I enjoy those. I, I like bloopers. I agree with that. I do bloopers agree with that. Bloopers are pretty cool. Yeah. And this show, movie had it. Show that you made a fun movie and had a fun time making the fun movie. Because I yeah. feel like too many people take it themselves too seriously. Uh, honestly, if I didn't know a lot about filmmaking, uh, and I'm not saying that to be cocky or anything. I like <laughs> literally that's all I do is learn and, and watch about filmmaking. Uh, and if I didn't know that much, I probably would enjoy this more. Not that, you know, people who do know a lot could, can't enjoy this movie. Mm-hmm. Just the way my brain works. I kept being taken out of the movie by how it was filmed. Yeah. Uh, but if if that weren't the case, I probably would say yes, it does go on the shelf. But because it is that way, I say no, it does not go on the shelf. Oh God damn yes. you! So sorry, America and the rest of the <laughs> world. Whip it does not make it on the KFR shelf with the likes of Apostle and Handmaiden. You know the town of Bodine is very pissed off right now. The town of Bodine is very pissed off. I do apologize for that. But you know what? Let live and let live. Hmm. That's what I like to say. They what, do say that. <laughs> yes, everyone. I don't know. Anyway, if it does not make another can of our shelf with the legs of Apostle and Handmaid, and that brings us to our assignment for next week. Uh, if you heard our first movie uh, back, or l- our last episode from last year, uh, I am going to have Glenn pick a number, and that is going to coincide with a list of movies that I have. So, Glenn, hmm. pick a number between 1 and 20. Oh, I like this. I'm thinking uh, 13. 13. It is literally the last one I put on. Anytime I've thought of one, <laughs> I've put it like in a random place so it's not just at the, l- yeah. the l- uh, biggest number. Uh, and guess what? Oh, what? We're continuing with our picks of Korean movies. Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, a movie with Song Kang-ho. Uh, called 
the Falcon. The Foul King, a wimpy, incompetent bank clerk, decides to become a pro wrestler. Directed by J- Kim Ji Woon, written by Kim Dae Woo and Kim Ji Woon, uh, starring Park Seng Myung, Song Kang Ho, Jang Jin Young, and uh, Jang Hong Seong, as well as other people. Uh, and I don't want to butcher their names. This is going to be mm-hmm. on Plex. Uh, full disclosure I have seen this. Oh. But I, I really, you know. When I thought that there was potentially going to be a theme of Korean movies, I this I year. like this theme. I do. I do too. If streaming roulette could get on board with us, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so yes, the Foul King uh, is a comedy, sports comedy uh, with Song Kang Ho, and that's uh, the main thing you need to know. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I'm ready. Yeah. So that's going to be available on uh, Plex. Oh shit! I had it and then I exited out of it. There's a few. Ugh. Plex, Roku, and it looks like that's it. Plex and Roku, both are free. Uh, there will probably be ads. None of those usually have too many ads, so it won't be like uh, the host. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully that is the case with this one. Song Kang Ho, man. If he is my most watched actor this year, I'm a blessed man. Well, I, I think uh, I'm not jinxing us, but honestly, I, I'm going to jinx it. I think he will be. So, Foul King is our assignment for next week. The Foul King, to be specific. F O U L, mm-hmm. not F O W L, or any yeah. other spelling of foul. Uh, that is available on Plex and Roku, both free apps for everyone. You don't need to be a subscriber. Thank you, everyone, for listening. As always, you can check out our website at www.keystonefilmreview.com. On Instagram, we're Keystone underscore film underscore review. Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube, Keystone Film Review. And on Letterboxd, I am Mike KFR. And I'm Glenn KFR. And that will do it until next week when we get our pro wrestling on. Gutter of Glenn will be yeah. back. <laughs> Mayhem Mike. Or Mike oh. Mayhem. What did you call me? I don't forgot know. his own name. It's yeah. Mike Mayhem. It's all the CTE from wrestling. My estrogen is kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Goodbye, everybody. Bye bye. You, well, no. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs>